now let's study unit 1 with me. Health. There are three main parts in this lesson. How well do you sleep? The secrets of long life, health and happiness. First of all, let's study the new vocabulary today. Let's read out loud the words together with me. Fall asleep. Fall asleep. Take a nap. Take a nap. Do exercise. Do exercise. Take public transportation. Take public transportation. Eat out in restaurants. Eat out in restaurants. Go gardening. Go gardening. Be stressed at work. Be stressed at work. Read the novel in bed. Read the novel in bed. Play board games. Play board games. Play cards. Play cards. Play football. Play football. Play tennis. Play tennis. Play piano. Play piano. Do homework. Do homework. Do yoga. Do yoga. Do nothing. Do nothing. Do karate. Do karate. Go shopping. Go shopping. Go surfing. Go surfing. Go running. Go running. Go hiking. Go hiking. Now you can turn back the video to me and look at the pictures again so that you can memorize these new vocabulary. After you remember the vocabulary, I like you to learn the ways to pronounce S in English. There are three ways to pronounce S, S, Z, and A. You pronounce S X for the verbs ending in the letter P, K, T, F, P, H, and T, H. Besides, you pronounce S as Z for the verbs ending in the letter B, D, G, L, M, N, N, G, R, V, and Y. And the last way you pronounce S as is for the words ending in C E S X E S S C H S H and G E. For example, feels, sleeps, dances, feels is ending in L, so S here. Is pronounced as z, feels, as leaves, and in p. So s here is pronounced as sleeps and dance. In as word c e. So when you add s after dance. Is will be pronounced like dances. And now let's study the grammar part. In the lesson, you have to remember the ways to use three di different points in grammar. First of all, think of the simple present tense. The second one is present continuous tense, and the last one is the effort 
and expressions or frequency. So what is single person tense? Is it a tense used to describe the habits and the routines? For example, I eat an apple every day. So I eat an apple every day is a habit of someone. And besides, simple present tense is used to describe the things that are always true. For example, the sun rises in the east is a fact. So we use simple present tense to describe the sun. And how about the structure? In a formative form, we have two ways to use the single present tense. If the verb uh, is to be verb, so we can use E, is, am, and I. Is, am, and I stands after the subject. I go and he, she, it, go with, is, you, we, they, and the plural nouns will go with I. I am, he is, she is, it is, you are, we are, they are. For example, I am a student, he is a student. She is a student. It is a cat. They are my friends. And how about the word? With the normal words, we have two different ways to use the word in a sentence. If the word go with the singular, the singular nouns, or he, she, and it. We have to add S or ES after the words. And if the word go with you, we, they, or the plural nouns, you don't need to change the word form. For example, we, we sleep. He, he sleeps. She, she sleeps. It, it sleeps, or the cat, the cat sleeps. So how about in negative form? With to be, you just have to add not after E, M, and I. Is not equal to isn't, I not, Equal to aren't. For example, he isn't my friend. These aren't my books. And with the words, with the words, you have to add do or does together with not before the word, the main word in a sentence. For example, we don't go to school. She doesn't often play tennis. Remember, do not equal to don't. Does not equal to doesn't. We use don't after we, they, I, you, and plural noun. And we use doesn't after he, she, it, and singular noun. I don't, we don't, they don't, you don't, but he doesn't, she doesn't, it doesn't, or my friend doesn't. How about in interrogative form? With the yes no questions, you just move the to be words to the beginning of the sentence. It means remove is 
am and I. If not, I know not at the beginning of the sentence. And to answer this kind of question, we just yes, and then the subject together with is and are. Or no, the subject is and are with not. For example, are you a student? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Do you go to school? Yes, I do. No, I don't. For the WH questions, there are like yes no questions, but you have to add the WH at the beginning of the sentences, like what, where, why, who, something like this, and then to be right, and then subject. And with the normal words, you have a uh, we have, borrow, do, and does. WH, and then do, does, and then subject, and then verb. For example, what is your name? You can answer like, my name is, how do you spell your name? And then answer the question. For example, my name is Yi. And I spell my name as N H N. And now we move to another tense in English, present continuous tense. So when do we use present continuous tense? Present continuous tense is used to describe the things happening now or the things happening around now, but not necessarily at the moment. Current trends and changing situations. Okay, so three familiar, three familiar are present continuous. Ten are affirmative, negative, and interrelative. In affirmative, you have to use, you have to use the subject. And then to the verb is am I and then I am to verb for example I am working in narrative form you should have to add not after to the verb like they are not playing soccer at the moment or they aren't aren't equal to are not they aren't playing soccer at the moment. And interrogative form, you just have to move if, am, and I to be the beginning of the sentence of the question. For example, is it your pen? And to answer this kind of question, you just yes or no, with the subject together with the to be after that. And here, some notes for the for using present continuous tense. That is, we don't usually use statue, statue words in the present continuous tense. Some statue words like we, have, like, love, hate, or want. And the spelling rules are that for most words, you have to add in ing after the verbs. Example, walk, walking. And to the verbs ending in a consonant, a vowel, and a consonant. It means consonant, vowel, consonant. You have to double the last letter of the verb and add ing. For example, six, six is consonant, vowel, consonant. So, double T here, statement. For the words ending in E, you just delete E and add ing. Example, make ends in E. So, delete E, make, making.
So how about the the adverbs of frequency? The adverbs of frequency usually go before the main verb of after the verb to be. Adverbs of frequency. Some adverbs of frequencies are never, rarely, not often, sometimes, often, usually, and always. It goes increasingly from 0% to 100%. Never, rarely, not often, sometimes, often, usually, and always. You can see some examples on the screen. And the next one is the expressions of frequency. Expressions of frequency talk about how often we do something. They go at the beginning or end of a sentence. Some expressions you usually see, like one a week, twice a week, three times a week, four times a week. For example, I go swimming twice a week. At the weekend, at the weekend, on Sunday, in the summer, every Monday. For example, I have an exam at the weekend. Now let's practice speaking together. You just look at the screen, see? There are some questions on the screen and you just practice yourself, answer these questions. How often do you exercise? The answer is with the expressions of frequency. Well, for example, once a week. I do exercise once a week. Next one, how well do you sleep? These are some questions that you have to practice speaking. Answer them right now. Do you often feel tired? How many hours a night do you sleep? Before that time, I open. At the weekend, I. How often do you wake up in the middle of the night? Are you often sleepy during the day? Now we move the reading part. Here is the secret of long life. You see, here are the, the picture we have the word centenarian. Centenarian is the person who can live to 100 years old. So now let's Read the text and then you go back here and answer these two questions. Why are the people of Okinawa famous and what are the reasons for their good health? Now you can read the text in your book. Now, let's move to the listening part, The Secrets of Long Life. You have to listen to the audio here and then back to answer these two questions. Listen to the radio interview and answer what does David want to know and why is he in Sardinia. Let's listen. 1.4 Unit 1B no one knows exactly the reason why some people live longer than others. Why are they so healthy? Is it their diet? Do they go to the gym more than others? Well, one man is trying to answer these questions, and that man is explorer and journalist David McLean. He's currently travelling to places and regions with large numbers of people aged 100 and over and asking the questions, why are they so healthy? 
What are they doing that the rest of us aren't? At the moment, he's working on the island of Sardinia in Italy, but he's speaking to us right now on the phone. David, thank you for joining us today. Hello. So, first of all, tell us why you decided to visit Sardinia. Well, Sardinia is an interesting place because men live the same amount of time as women. That isn't normal for most countries. Men normally die younger. And does anyone know the reason why people live longer in Sardinia? There are different ideas about this, but possibly one explanation is that the family is so important here. Every Sunday, the whole family meets and they eat a huge meal together. Research shows that in countries where people live longer, the family is important. But also on Sardinia, the older mother or grandmother often has authority in the family. As men get older, they have less responsibility in Sardinian culture. So perhaps the older men have less stress, which means they're living longer. I see. So, do you think people live longer in traditional societies? That's an interesting question. It's true that even on Sardinia, the younger generation are eating more food like chips and、uh, burgers. Also, young people are moving to the city, so they are doing less exercise because of their lifestyle. So it will be interesting to come back to Sardinia in twenty years and see if people are still living longer. And this is the end of the audio. So now back to the screen. You have to answer these two questions. Okay, so now a matter part today, health and happiness. So just practice yourself to answer these two questions again. How happy do you think your country is? And give the reasons for your answer. A data set. Happy people generally don't get sick. How much do you agree with this opinion? Let's think yourself a working word, and then answer the questions here. Tell me your ideas about these two questions. 